Hello there. Welcome back to our video lecture series. This one's titled Fourier Series, a Mathematical Poem. This infinite set, containing the function identically equal to 1, along with infinitely many cosine and sine terms, is orthogonal over the interval on the real line from negative p to p. We have already shown that 1 and the cosines are orthogonal on this interval. The rest you will prove is a homework question. Based on our prior discussion of orthogonal series in Lecture 3, we can write a function f of x as an infinite series of the functions in this set. This results in what is known as a Fourier series, shown here. In this expression, the terms of the infinite sum are separated by type. The constant term is out front, and the cosine and sine terms are given in summation with separate coefficients, a n and b n, respectively. These coefficients are all determined in the same manner as discussed in Lecture 3. This is Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier. Handsome, isn't he? The series named after him was devised when he was solving a boundary value problem of a partial differential equation that models the flow of heat in solids. He published his results in 1822 in a book titled The Analytic Theory of Heat, or originally, Theory Analytique de la Chaleur. Pardon my French. Fourier's original problem was to determine solutions of the two-dimensional heat equation over a semi-infinite rectangular area, as shown here. The so-called heat equation is a linear, second-order, homogeneous, partial differential equation. Physically, it models a long, solid metal rod with insulated edges, with heat being applied to one end. The solution of the equation therefore provides the spatial distribution of temperature in the rod throughout time. This problem is difficult to solve if the distribution of heat on the boundary is given as some random function. However, it has nearly trivial solutions for the sine and cosine terms in the Fourier series. Due to the linearity of the heat equation, solutions for these terms can be added together to approximate the solution for arbitrary heat distributions using the Fourier series. We will solve this problem later in the course, once PDEs have been formally introduced. It is difficult to overstate the importance of Fourier series to applied mathematics, physics, and engineering. Here's the famous physicist and mathematician, Lord Kelvin, on the subject. Fourier's theorem is not only one of the most beautiful results of modern analysis, but it is said to furnish an indispensable instrument in the treatment of nearly every recondite question in modern physics. Fourier is a mathematical poem. As an undergraduate student, I took an entire semester-long course on Fourier analysis. I got a C+. We applied Fourier's results not only to differential equations, but to signal processing, digital image rendering, medical imaging, and many other topics. While we only have time to scratch the surface in this course, let it be known that you are looking at one of the most beautiful and fruitful results in all of mathematics. In this example, we're going to calculate the Fourier series of the linear function f of x equals x on the interval from negative 1 to 1. In order to calculate this Fourier series, we have to calculate the coefficient a0, which corresponds to the constant function, as well as the an, the coefficients of the cosines, and the bn, the coefficients of the sine terms. By calculating this integral, we see that the coefficient a0 is equal to 0. This is expected, since it's clear that the area under the linear function, from negative 1 to 1, is 0. In order to calculate the coefficients a n, we must calculate the integral of x cosine pi n x over the interval from negative 1 to 1. We proceed using our old friend integration by parts. The 
the results of our integration by parts give us two terms, both of which are equal to zero. We therefore conclude that the coefficients a n are equal to zero for all n. That means that the coefficients on all cosine terms in our Fourier series are equal to zero. All that remains is to calculate the coefficients bn of the sine terms. We proceed again with integration by parts. Finally, a non-zero result. We've shown that the coefficients bn on the cosine terms are equal to negative 2 pi over n times negative 1 to the n. We have therefore successfully calculated the Fourier series of the function f of x equals x on the integral from negative 1 to 1. We can write the series as an infinite series of sine terms with the coefficients bn as we've calculated. Let's plot some terms from our series and see how well it approximates the function f of x equals x. Plotting our first term, you see we have a normal sine wave, which doesn't seem to have much to do with the function f of x equals x. Adding the second term, the results are not too much better. Okay. We're getting there. As we add more and more terms, it's clear that our Fourier series converges to the line that is the function f of x equals x. One last thing. Did you notice that in the Fourier series of the function f of x equals to x, the coefficient a0 and the an were all equal to zero? That wasn't a coincidence. It was because the function has a certain kind of symmetry about the y-axis. That is, for all points x on the real line, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. We say that functions which exhibit this kind of symmetry are odd functions. When a function is odd, the Fourier coefficients of the constant and cosine functions will be equal to zero. We can then write its Fourier series in terms of sine functions alone. This is fittingly called a sine series. We can do this because the sine functions themselves are odd functions, while the constant function and cosine functions are even, i.e. they exhibit the symmetry f of negative x equals f of x for all x on the real line. Then for even functions, the coefficients of the sine terms, the bn, are all equal to zero, and the Fourier series can be written as a constant term plus an infinite series of cosines, called a cosine series. Of course, unlike integers, functions do not have to be either even or odd. If a function does not have even or odd symmetry, then the Fourier series will have non-zero sine and cosine terms. The lesson here is that if you want to calculate the Fourier coefficients of some function, it is worthwhile to check if this function is even or odd, if it is, this will effectively give you half of the calculation for free. Thanks for watching, everybody. More content's coming soon. Stay tuned.